First, the terrorist attack outside the Kabul airport. Dozens of people have been killed in blast just hours after Canada's last evacuation flight left. It's a hard day today. As you know, two suicide bombers assessed to have been ISIS fighters detonated in the vicinity of the Abbey Gate at Hamad Karzai International Airport and in the vicinity of the Barron Hotel, which is immediately adjacent. The attack on the Abbey Gate was followed by a number of ISIS gunmen who opened fire on civilians and military forces. The Pentagon says 12 American military members were killed, 15 more wounded. The U.S. did not say how many Afghan civilians died, but Afghan officials tell the Associated Press and the BBC at least 60 people were killed. Harjit Sajjan is Minister of National Defence. I spoke with him earlier from Vancouver, and I began by asking him what he knows about how the attack unfolded. But before I answer that question, uh, I just want to pass on my sincere condolences um, to the uh, U.S. service members and their families who have been killed uh, or the ones that have been wounded, and also uh, the Afghans as well. It just goes to show the, the, the type of environment that our service uh, members operate in uh, when it comes to uh, saving lives, and that's what they did, and that's what I want. Uh, Canadians and the rest of the world uh, to remember. In terms of the attack itself, um, this is was a very dangerous uh, uh, operation, one that we planned very carefully, and this is why establishing security was extremely uh, important, um, and we maintain security throughout. As these type of uh, intelligence uh, um, uh, uh, information was coming in, we were monitoring very closely uh, and looking at the, uh, making plans on what we needed to do. Mitigate uh, as possible, but then ultimately uh, making the decisions uh, for the sake of not only uh, uh, our safety of our personnel, um, but also Afghans uh, uh, themselves. And that uh, series of decisions led to the evacuation mission in Kabul ending. Your government acknowledges that there are uh, a number of Canadian citizens and permanent residents effectively stranded in Afghanistan now. Can you tell me how many? We don't have the exact numbers uh, uh, just yet. Um, uh, uh, the is a general air brief to, to, uh, today. We were able to, just from last night, the 24 hours, um, evacuate about a thousand uh, people, uh, dead included uh, uh, Canadian citizens. Um, but to the Canadian citizens who are still in the country, I know that our global affairs colleagues and immigration are reaching out to them to making sure that they have that communication, um, that we, they remain safe, and at the same time look at the next steps on what can be done uh, uh, to get them out safely. Uh, so they're reaching out to those that they know about, but do you have any sense about the number of people that we actually don't know about, but who are our people, either citizens or permanent residents of this country? Yes, of course. I mean, obviously we could only reach out to the people that we know about. And anybody who um, uh, is there that have not actually, whether a contacted, registered, I know that Global Affairs will be sending out as, uh, uh, information wide as possible so that we can get, get, uh, get in touch uh, with them. So uh, Global Affairs will be working actively on this to making sure that uh, they have the right information. Uh, information could be provided for, uh, based on their safety as well. And then look Look at uh, what are those opportunities and how uh, we can bring them out safely. Okay, let's talk about that because it's one thing to know that they're there and uh, and for people to have documentation and you readily acknowledge there are people you, you don't even know about who are also there. I'm, I'm unclear then what plans are even possible to extricate them. How do you do that? Well, as you can see here, the, the security situation there is extremely uh, volatile and squarely on the Taliban's uh, shoulders uh, for this. And but what we'll be working on is uh, and, uh, is how we can get them out safely to, to other parts, uh, to to a third low, uh, locations. I know that Global Affairs has already uh, uh, put emphasis um, uh, uh, activating their consulates and their embassies to to get ready to uh, to, to receive. 
Um, so we'll be working on, on, on how we can uh, safely get them out. That information that Global Affairs uh, will provide uh, will assess the, the, the current situation. Uh, and we've, you know, we've, we've been able to do this in many other uh, type of situations. But given the volatility of the situation, there's our, the safety of our Canadian citizens are as our number one priority. But the communication will continue. As the, the situation further develops and more opportunities present themselves, we will take them and making sure um, uh, we can communicate with that with them and to be able to get them out as safely as possible. I guess what I'm wondering is you, you say that you're looking at plans about how to get them out safely, which would suggest that you think it's actually possible to get them out safely. And when you say get them out, who's getting them out? Canadian forces getting them out? Well, or allies, the Americans, uh, the, the, those, uh, you know, next door? Is it Pakistan? I, I'm just trying to understand uh, who's going to be doing this. Well, as, for one is we obviously can't get into the details of anything, yes, but all options will always be on the table when it comes to um, uh, reaching out and protecting our citizens regardless where they are around the world. We will use every opportunity uh, and uh, to, to uh, help our Canadian citizens. In this case here, we will look at all options uh, to be able to support our citizens. I know that Global Affairs Canada is on this. The situation in the country, as we've just seen, heartbreaking uh, um, in the lives that have been lost um, because of a terrorist attack that has taken place uh, on the ground. Um, we will uh, uh, monitor the situation very closely. The ones that we know that uh, are there, but if there's ones that our global affairs are not in touch with, uh, for them to be able to get in contact with them so that we, uh, they too uh, can be given the appropriate information. But we're also continue to work with the, the Afghans who weren't able uh, to make it uh, out either. Uh, when it comes to their uh, visas, as Minister Mandacino has stated, they remain uh, valid and then we will continue to work uh, and go on the next phase, which is to, again to figure out ways to how do we get them out of the country and especially when it comes to third location, very similar to the uh, Syrian refugee project. I know that you don't want to go into too many operational details in part because you actually don't know what they're going to be because there's so much to figure out in terms of any uh, chance that we can uh, get more people out of there. But can you tell me whether uh, it is your understanding that Canadian forces would be involved in any uh, avenue that uh, Canada ultimately pursues to get the many thousands of people um, still looking for a way out? Um, all options are will, will be on the table. The Canadian Armed Forces will always do their part and provide the necessary support to our partners at uh, Global Affairs and uh, uh, to immigration. And when it comes to uh, when it comes to options and opportunities, when the Taliban uh, took Kabul city, uh, um, you know the there was an impossible task of uh, uh, securing the airport and getting many people out. But again because of the tremendous work of the Canadian Armed Forces members working alongside our allies, we were able to uh, bring out um, uh, over 3,700 um, Afghans. So we will look at all opportunities. And just to and pick up on that, Minister, on when it just comes because to especially of, supporting our uh, Canadians. Yeah, Minister, sorry, it's just because uh, we're getting short on time and I just want to sort of pick up on the numbers because I do think that's key and a lot of people want the answers to this. We do know that the government received 2,500 applications representing a total of 8,000 Afghans. D do we know, we know that several thousand did not make it out on Canadian flights. So do we know how many we left behind? So first of all, the, um, we are now looking, working on the next steps as we are pulling our uh, troops um, out of the area. We're sending teams to the third locations uh, where the U.S. have been uh, moving Africa into the staging areas and, uh, and then now determining how many uh, were destined uh, for Canada. So I don't have the answer just yet because this is all taking place. Our number one priority remained is getting as many people out. I didn't want to shift, we didn't want to shift any resources to anything else besides for pulling as many people out. And now we're working on the next steps, which is to go to those third uh, staging locations, determine if there are any and people that were destined uh, for, uh, for Canada. And the ones that have, uh, uh, that we weren't able to uh, get out, now we will continue 
to work with our allies and look at every opportunity and how we can uh, find other methods uh, to get them out. Right. I'm not sure you can hear me through the siren, but I'm going to persevere. It seems to be uh, fading away there. Um, Afghans, and it could be thousands, uh, as you well know, could be targeted by the Taliban because of their work with our mission in Afghanistan. Do you understand why many would argue that we have failed them? One thing I want to, be very, I want to make it very clear when it comes to uh, the Afghans who work with us. I know many that have I've worked with, I was, even throughout this very difficult time, as um, as a minister uh, uh, managing this crisis uh, uh, for the military, um, I was in touch with many people who that that we served with. Uh, we know that, that we, uh, we're, 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 not, we're not going to let them down. Uh, the security situation does not allow it, and the Taliban did not allow us to bring all everybody out um, as uh, we would have liked to. But we're not going to stop, and we're going to continue to be able to support them, and especially all the families uh, as well. Well, you're a veteran of Afghanistan, and as you know, dozens of veterans have spoken about this, about how devastated they are, how angry they are, and also uh, th that they feel that we should have anticipated uh, what was coming sooner, we should have gone in sooner, and although we probably couldn't have brought everyone out, we could have brought far more people out. As someone who was in Afghanistan, uh, you know, do you share the regrets that many veterans share? And do you, do you feel it in an especially acute way as Minister of National Defense? So first of all, yes, um, I do have a personal connection to the country and especially a personal connection to the people that uh, we have served with. This is why when I was serving, we called for uh, programs to get our, our veterans out. Uh, many of them um, have come. And then there are some that didn't qualify and we made uh, um, very well known how restrictive some of those uh, earlier programs uh, were. It's one of the reasons now when I was in government we wanted to make sure working with Minister Mandicino that we kept it broad as possible so that uh, as many people uh, we, uh, that served with us could come in and that's exactly what we have done and it's because of those veterans groups that I've been in touch with many of them that we've been able to verify uh, the ones that actually work with us, get them on an approved list, and work very hard uh, during this emergency portion of the uh, the operation to get as many people out. And now we'll move towards uh, the uh, the, ne the next steps. Yes, there are some that uh, even that I have worked with uh, could not uh, make it ma make it out. And I'm committing uh, to them, as we have done to uh, all those who have worked, that we are going to be now shifting our focus on how we can get them out of third locations. Have you uh, sort of engaged in any introspection, though, finally, Minister? And, and uh, do you believe that you could have done better and, and that uh, despite best efforts, as I know you've described many times, that you made mistakes? So I want to make back again very clear on this. Just to let you know, we've been monitoring the situation in Afghanistan very closely. We haven't had a military footprint in the country since 2014. And we have monitored the security situation, the negotiations that were taking place. Immediately we had concerns with the agreements uh, that were kind of made and how things were going. Um, and then uh, we had a team on the ground uh, earlier, um, uh, earlier uh, to making sure that the safety of our personnel uh, at the embassy. And because of this, we were able to shift very quickly um, to evacuating people. And I want to make this also very, very clear because the work that was done from the first American flight that came out, four days later, our Canadian uh, flights were taking up bringing out Afghans. And so we worked very quick, quickly alongside with our allies. We can't control the situation that has uh, uh, obviously taken place. Um, uh, and because we have, didn't have a, a footprint, we didn't let that stop us. We were able to leverage our relationship with our allies, get in there very, very quickly, uh, establish the, the air bridge. We were one of the last nations to be start uh, pulling uh, people out. And more importantly, our, how we are accepting people as a nation is far broader than other nations as, as well. And we were one of the first nations uh, to announce our initiatives. And we will continue to work to making sure that some of the people that work with us, that we get them out safely.
Mr. Sajjan, it was good of you to take the time. I know it's very busy for you right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.